Welcome back everybody, this is Brethren here. Today we're going to go over our Mystic Huntsman build. And I'm doing this instead of in-game doing this by slide presentation to kind of point out some of the strengths and weaknesses of this build uh, as far as math is concerned. Uh, for those of you that didn't see the build, feel free to go on my channel and find out which one it is we're talking about. But this is the second Mystic Thayer's bird that I've uploaded already. This is the one that's Traditional Monk 1, Inquisitor 6, and it's actually the Sacred Huntsman Inquisitor. So you can have that free pet. A straight wizard three, and I actually suggest going just plain wizard three and do an universalist so that you have access to all the spells. Mystic Thayerge 10, and again, you're gonna hop around. If you watch that video, you'll see we don't just go one in this, six of that, three of those, and 10 more of them. We jump around quite a bit to make some good use of some feats. Uh, this is a tiefling build for the hunger seed, and that's because of the bonus to strength and wisdom. Penalty to charisma, but we shore that up quickly by leveling it back up to 10. But those plus two, plus twos are extremely nice. And this is reasonably considered a strength-based build. Now, of course, we'll need to buff that strength because 16 is going to be lackluster, and we're not really going to put any points in it. We will level off dex and con from 13 up to 14 by the end of the build. But first and foremost, we're going to take our 15 intelligence, pump three points into it, bring it all the way up to 18. That's going to get us some free... Uh, skill points to invest. It will also give us extra spell slots and it will give us at least the ability to cast level 7 wizard spells. We will not be able to cast level 8 spells from a spell book. We won't go that high. There will be a, a wizard 13 and an inquisitor 16 based on the way this build is laid out. That will give us access to level 6 inquisitor spells which are the highest spells that they have access to. And then of course level 7 wizard spells which of course We'll get every spell in the spell book from 1 to 7. That's the goal. We get a little bit of protection from cold, electricity, and fire. Nothing really to write home about, but that DR5 against fire will actually help out early in the game. Those the alchemists that like to chug those uh, breathing fire potions, the fire belly, I think it's called, do like 1d6 of damage or 1d4, 1d5, something like that damage. So we can resist most, if not all, of that damage every time, unless they crit, which I don't even think is a thing that they can do. We do have weakness against acid, of course, since it's all sonic, but we could shore this up, and I tried to, but it sadly didn't come around until Inquisitor 6, which was level 20. So it's there, but whatever. We get invisibility free once a day, thanks to our tiefling heritage, uh, but it's not anything we'll write home about. And again, we'll be helpful, but we won't really rely on it. Now, we get a one feat at level 1, like all characters do. Because we're not human, we don't get a second one. However, we do get a free level 1 pick, because of our dip in the monk, which all monks get. So we decided to go for dodge and then for deflect arrows. If you switch this into a dex based build, because a lot of people like that, there's a lot of bang for your buck, good armor class, good chance to hit, especially if you go weapon finesse, I would ditch dodge for weapon finesse. And if you could fit it in the build, grab dodge later. You will need it to get some of the other things like crane style, crane wing, and crane riposte. But like I said, it's up to you. Uh, we have. Uh, important spell picks to decide on. Inquisitor spells are not like wizard spells where we can describe it into our book and just have everything at level 1. These ones we have limited picks. At level 20 in this build, this is how many Inquisitor spells you can pick from. So 6 level 1 spells, you can pick 6 level 2 spells, 5 level 3, 5 level 4, 4 level 5, and at level 20 you finally get 2 level 6 spells. So obviously online much much later. But Suggestions are obvious ones for healing, buffing, stuff that doesn't require a high DC check because you're not going to have one. Your wisdom is 16. It's never getting any higher unless you use gear. Same with your intelligence on the wizard side. Your intelligence is 18, which is respectable, but it's no 24. And again, we can buff it with gear, but it won't reach 32, 34, which I could get on an, a pure intelligent-based build. So we're relying on spells that if they do have a save, there's... Even if they make the save, an effect still happens. And then we will rely on spells that have no save, of course. So a lot of ray spells are going to be included, so you're going to like those. And of course, the buffs and the heals don't require saves because you're buffing yourself and you're healing yourself or your team. Why would you need a save against that? So for level 1 spells, in no particular order, my suggestions are Shield of Faith, Cure Light Wounds, Divine Favor, Bane, True Strike, and Expeditious Retreat. Now. True Strike and Expedition Retreat are both available on the wizard side, so there's no real need to pick them here. However, if I don't pick them here, they don't translate over. What do I mean by that? 
This is a Mystic Theurge build. One of the key points of Mystic Theurge is not only do you level up your Arcane spellcasting along with your Divine spellcasting, at the same time, another feat that they give you at level 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 is your level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 spells on the one side, in this case Inquisitor, hop over to the wizard side at levels 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If and only if it's unique, and Shield of Faith would be a fine example. Level 1, I'll have this on my Inquisitor. Level 2 on my Wizard spell book, you will see Shield of Faith by the end of this build. Same with all my Cure spells. Wizards don't have Cure spells, so you should see Cure Light Wounds, Cure Minor Wounds, and Cure Serious Wounds on the Wizard side, but instead of the level 1, 2, and 3, you'll see it at levels 2, 3, and 4. Again, it's 1 up. It, it stops at level 5, going to a level 6 upgrade. So all the level 6 spells and 7 spells and on up are basically unique to your Inquisitor or your Wizard or whatever we're talking about. Now, what does that mean for you? These ones are unique. Divine Favor, Cure Light Wounds, Shield of Faith, Bane are not spells that a Wizard has. So you can expect that if we pick these four, at some point in our build, our Wizard Spellbook will have those four spells at level 2, which means I can slot them as a Wizard Caster level 13, not 16, like my Inquisitor, and cast those spells, which is fine for something like Divine Favor, because all you have to do to be level 9, caster level to maximize its effect. So that means I can cast it from either side if I want. But True Strike and Expeditious Retreat are both available on the wizard side. What does that mean? Well, if I pick True Strike here, you would think that means I get True Strike on the wizard side at level 2. It will not do this, because it knows the wizards could pick doesn't mean you have picked, but you could pick True Strike on the wizard side. And of course we will, because it's a spell uh, scroll that we can just get, scribe it, and bam, we have every wizard spell 1 through 7. We're going to do that sort of thing on this build. Same with Expeditious Retreat. Because of that, if I want to be able to cast it as an Inquisitor, I have to pick it on the Inquisitor side myself. That's why I've included those two. It doesn't mean I have to. I may decide I really don't need them. Wizard side's close enough, and I don't need uh, you know a ton of castings of this, let's say, or I don't need to run fast th that long. I could just slot it once or twice on my wizard build and call it good. Yes and no, it's up to me. Uh, other possible choices, if I want to swap any or all of these out, would be something like Doom, Ear Piercing Scream, or Bless. I'm not a real big fan of Bless. Yes, it's in buff. Yes, it helps, but we're going to rapidly out-level it with Heroism, for instance. But... Again, we have access to scrolls. I can just read a damn scroll, cast it from a ring, and it'll last long enough for me to get the benefit out of it, and I don't really need to have it slotted. But, your piercing stream is another one of those that, again, is available to the wizard side of things at level 1 as well. So if I get it in my wizard, which of course I will, and I want to be able to cast it from the Inquisitor, I really need to pick it. So, it's on the list for this reason as a possible backup. Doom is unique, so if I pick Doom, then you know I'll see it eventually at level 2 in my wizard spellbook. So again, those are the things you want to start looking for. Note things like Bone Shaker, again, is another one that a wizard has access to at level 2. So by me getting it here doesn't mean I get it for free at the wizard side. I'll still have to scribe it. But this will allow me to cast it from either spell pool, if you want to think of it that way. From there at level 2, again, I went with Cure Spell. Lesser Resto for some nice removing of Ability Drain. Uh, you're going to have that no matter what you do. You're still going to have it. Poison still a thing, as well as those uh, other spells that drain Dexterity or Strength. You get the idea. These are extremely helpful. Yes, I can get potions and scrolls for that, but why not just have it on the build so I don't have to think about it. Find Traps is a nice bump to your perception for finding traps only. It does work. That's awesome. And again, Bone Shaker for some awesome damage. Guaranteed to hit. There is a save. I want to say it's actually, uh, I don't know that it's a will save. I want to say that Bone Shaker might be a fortitude save. Uh, anyway, even if they make the save, they take half damage. So there's no way for them to get away from that as far as I know. It's entirely possible, though, that something like uh, Death Ward might protect from it. I don't know that, though. Two more spells that I have to pick and suggestions for me are Delay Poison, Resist Energy, Whole Person, and Seeing Viz. Now, if I was to be hard-pressed to decide right now what to pick, I'd honestly probably get Delayed Poison and Seeing Viz. Why? Delayed Poison's unique. It does not show up on my wizard side, and therefore, by me picking it here, I get it for free as a level 3 casting on my wizard side, which is cool. 
these ones the wizards will have access to and of course I will get them so resist energy I don't have to worry about so much whole person we're not going to have that high of a DC so we're really not going to be able to capitalize on this like you think and it would be actually better on the wizard side for me to cast it because the intelligence is higher than my wisdom but it's a thing seeing this on the other hand is a buff so having it on this side and the wizard side is beneficial to me that's why I suggest Billy Poison and see Viz. But you can do what you want. And these aren't the only choices. These are just the ones that stood out to me. Cure Serious Wounds again at level 3. You know, we're seeing a trend here. We're getting many, if, if not all, of the single target heals. Notice that they also serve dual purpose. Not only do we get to heal ourselves and our pet and any of our team that's lame, because we're going solo, they're going to show up eventually and be have to be carried, so to speak. Um, but this also can damage undead, and therefore we can use it as a touch attack. That's okay. Searing Light is a really decent ray spell. It's not the best one I'll have, but it is comparable sometimes to Scorching Ray. And it's unique in that I can have it here, and if I pick it, I will show up as a level 4 ray uh, on my wizard side. And again, it's not that I have to slot it in my wizard side, but I'll have access to it. So that's all good. Prayer is a nice buff and debuff as well, and they do not get a save to debuff or to ignore the debuff that's pretty nice for us heroism is kind of a weird pick in that it's available as a wizard side but I'd rather have the ability to cast it multiple times so slotting it wizard I'll scribe it but I'll also pick it up here that's why it's so late though because the wizard side will get it sooner and then for the last pick if I'm forced to pick it'll be between probably one of these two communal delay poison which is nice magical vestment which is also nice now, I may say Magical Vestment just because of its utility. Yes, Delay Poison and Communal Delay Poison are overlapping, so I don't really need the Communal, you might say, because I have multiple castings of Delay Poison. If it's just me and my pet, I buff me with this spell, and then I buff the pet with this spell, and we're good. That's true. However, you guys know just as well as I do, you get jumped in this game sometimes. And part of that is I can only get one spell off before we really have to start fighting. We don't get to pre-buff up, what do I do? Especially if they throw poison. Well, I don't want to be poisoned, so do I buff me and then waste another round buffing my pet, hoping that the pet doesn't get poisoned? Do I buff the pet, hoping they don't hit me with it and let the pet tank a little bit, allowing me to recast it on myself? Or do I just throw out communal delay poison and both of us are just covered, boom, we don't have to worry about it? You see why this is kind of nice? It's not necessary. So again, I may just err on the side of caution and say, I've got Delay Poison already, or scrolls of it, until I get it, and then might as well just have Magical Vestment. This does give us some utility, not for us really, mostly for our friends. Remember, we're going to have the best gear because we're running solo. Our teammates are going to show up sporadically, and they're going to have lame gear. I'll keep some decent gear around for everybody, but by and large, it's going to be lackluster compared to me. I want to make sure they're as buffed as I can make them so that they can at least hold their own, right? So that's why Magical Vestment's here. Divine Power is an amazing spell and probably one of the first picks I get at level 4 here. If not it, Death Ward would be the obvious pick after that. Why do I say that? Divine Power is really good damage output. Death Ward is really good protection. And you're going to want both. Freedom of movement I can get on a ring, perhaps. I can get it on a weapon, perhaps. There's plenty of ways to get this where I don't really need to have it in the build. It's unique, and therefore the wizard's not going to get it unless I pick it here. And then it'll show up as a level 5 wizard pick, and I'm cool with that. But, again, it's really not the best spell ever. Burst of Glory is a decent buff, AOE buff for you and your friends. It does a lot of neat things. And then for our last unknown pick, suggestions are Stone Skin, Cure Critical Wounds, just to complete our quadra pack here of healing, or Restoration. Now... Why would I want one over another? Well, one, these two are unique and therefore not on the wizard side, unless I pick them. This one is, and while it's a nice buff, yes, I'd like to have multiple castings in a day, it's such a good buff that I wouldn't mind slotting this on my wizard slots, wasting two, so to speak, to make it on there so that me and my pet can have it for many, many hours. And then I don't necessarily need to have it then on my inquisitor side. So Cure Crit can, could come up then or restoration now why would I want one versus the other well obviously a better heal better damage to undead restoration though is definitely better than lesser does a little bit more 
yeah, I could probably pocket heal by having just restoration scrolls on me for me and my pet when that really is necessary, when this isn't doing the job, or a potion or two that has just restoration in it. But I'd like to save money. So I already have heals, and while Cure Serious isn't as good as obviously as Cure Critical, Restoration is definitely better than Lesser Resto. This would probably save me more money in the long run. I don't know how much that really is, but again, I would probably flip a coin and hope for the best. Level 5 picks. Flame Strike is nice because not only is it unique, well actually all three of these spells are nice because not only are they unique and therefore at level 5 you'll see them as level 6 wizard spells. Flame Strike is nice in that it does two different types of damage. Flaming and Divine. So even if you're immune to Flame, looking at you, you asshole trolls, you're still taking Divine damage. So that's at least something. Righteous Smite is nice in that it's an amazing buff. You stack it with Divine Power and it's amazing, or you can just alternate between the two because they last about as long as they should, one round per caster level. So this is great. When you run out of those, use this one or vice versa. But if you really, really want to see some effect, this one with this one. And if you want to push it more than that, do both of these and dip into your wizard side of things and get yourself a transformation, uh, which you'd have to cast last because you can't cast spells after you use the transformation spell while it's under effect. But between those three spells, Divine Power, Righteous Might, Transformation, you are a mean motor scooter. So you have lots and lots of fun just killing shit in melee range. Or ranged, but mostly melee. Spell resistance for obvious reasons in my opinion, but doesn't mean you have to pick it. But it's good, and again, unique. Wizards don't have access to it, but to this Inquisitor does. Last pick could be True Seeing, Disrupting Weapon, or Communal Stone Skin in my opinion. Both of these, True Seeing and Communal Stone Skin, I think, are both available on the wizard side. So again, I don't necessarily need them over here, but if I want to be able to cast them on both spell books, I need to pick it. Disrupting Weapon is unique though, and therefore I get it here, and it would show up as a level 6 wizard spell. But by the time you get these, you're so low or high level that you're probably not fighting in debt. I don't know that, but maybe there's a ton at the end of the game, but I haven't been anywhere near the end yet. So. Maybe it'll be unique and interesting. Maybe it'll just be lackluster, and I'll just say, fuck it, give me true seeing. Again, or communal stone skin, much like the same argument we have for communal delay poison. Cast it once, uh, heat a battle because you got surprised, and you and your pet both have some protection. And, by the way, this uses 5 diamond dust. This uses 10. So to cast this on me and then cast it on my pet, I am using 10. Yes, it lasts for many hours. This one lasts for, I want to say, 10 minutes. But it uses the same amount that it would take to, to buff me and the, the kitty. And therefore, me and the kitty and anyone else on my team have this stone skin up for 10 minutes of fighting. That could be all I really need. So this one might be more important, especially if I don't pick this one. But again, I would have access to it, I believe, on the wizard side, so I don't really need to freak about it. Last level 6 spells don't show up until literally level 20 in this build. So it's really kind of who cares. But I care. And I would probably go heal harm. And I say that because I can heal 150 points of damage. I can damage someone for 150 points of damage. Win-win, right? Melee combat, sure. But it's a touch attack, and those are easier to land. And these other ones are nice. These two here are literally wizard spells, so I don't even have to pick them unless I really want them on both sides. And at this level, I'm not letting uh, spells switch over to the level 7 wizard spells. It literally is only on level 6 and above that they get stayed where they're at. So Umbral Strike and Undeath to Death, I probably want to just make sure I have that on my wizard side anyway. Inspiring Recovery is kind of a probably not. You can raise the dead, so to speak, and if they recover, everyone on your team that's within range or that can see it or whatever, they get a buff for like a minute. It's like, meh, something has to die for me to basically get the buff. It seems kind of dumb. Blade Barrier, on the other hand, some nice damage output, and again, it's Unlike most of your spells, which are magical as far as like flaming, or cold, or acid, this is actual physical damage. So that's kind of an interesting possibility, especially if you pin someone down in a corner, bad guy, and literally spinning some blades where he can't get out of it. Yes, he's fighting you and you're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but we'll buff up and we'll have plenty of protection. He can't get out of it and he's stuck there. He's constantly making reflex saves, reflex save, reflex save to avoid the damage. And that lasts for a decent amount of time. So that's a nice little spell. Cleanse is on here because I want to like it. It's single. It's only for the caster, so I don't get to help my pet with it. I can't damage anybody with it. But it's one of those where heal seems like a better spell in every step of the way. So it feels like because they're at the same level that I'm missing something. So if you guys know why cleanse is better than heal, let me know.
but so far heal and harm are pretty much my go-to. As far as wizard spells go, it doesn't matter, because again, you're going universalist if you follow my advice, and you're getting every spell if you can scribe it in your book. What does matter for picks would be picking spells that you haven't really seen a lot of scrolls of. So Grease would be a fine example. I've seen plenty of Mage Armor Shield spells. Yeah, maybe not Shield. Shocking Grass, though, plenty. Magic Missile, plenty. So those ones I'm going to get regardless of whether I pick it or not. Now, I'm not saying don't pick it, especially if you know you need it. Grab that Mage Armor. But I'd grab Shield first because, again, I'll probably be able to scribe Mage Armor without too much effort. I'll find it eventually. I rarely find a Shield spell or a Grease spell. And that is important for you to know. Sometimes I'll pick stuff that even though I know I'm going to find plenty of mirror images, I still want it because it really is protection. But protection from arrows, on the other hand, I don't think I've seen one scroll for except for like maybe once. Same with Sense Vitals. This is how many spells per day you can cast, by the way, at level 20 with intelligence of 18. 5 level 1, 5 level 2, and this is how many slots you have available is what I'm telling you. 5, 5, 5, 5, 3, 2, 1, and that's as high as we can take it. Now. We can bump our intelligence with gear, and therefore we'll get more slots in the day, as long as you leave that gear on, which of course you will do. I can't tell you what that is. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. But you'll see it as you level up your intelligence, how much more you're getting. Notice that if you go Universalist, we're not getting that extra free slot. Remember, you get that, the school that you specialize in, you get that free slot every day. So that's a thing. If I went, obviously I'd probably go Evocation. So that'd be 5 plus 1 Evocation spell. 5 plus 1 Evocation spell. The sad part of that is if you do that, which is why I'm suggesting you don't, is you have to pick two opposing schools, at least, if not four, depending on what kind of wizard you pick. If you do that, again, so what? I can scribe those scrolls. Let's say I, I did Divination as an opposing school. I would lose Sense Vitals and True Strike. Well, I can already get True Strike over here. True, nothing to worry about then. Over here, I don't get sense vitals. I can scribe it though, and then of course I can slot it, and it would take two slots to use just the one time. So what? That's fine. And if that's good enough for you, do that. But now here's the problem. If it's an opposing school, sense vitals is a unique spell. The wizards have it, the inquisitor does not. If I want to have this translate over to a level 3 inquisitor casting, then it cannot be an opposing school. That's huge. So that's why I say go Universalist. It's up to you. You can do what you want. If I wanted to waste more time on it, I could probably find two schools to not give a damn about and know that this side of it is going to cover all my needs and the few spells that I'm losing out over here, I could slot it like once or twice and call it good and not worry too much about it. But again, I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'll just do the cheap and easy way and just say, just go Universalist. It just makes it so much easier. You have access to every spell, one through seven, then once you find them and scribe them as a wizard and all your one through five spell or most I should say of your one through five spells on the wizard side will show up on your inquisitor side as level two through six so that's pretty baller so again these are mostly just buffs and debuffs uh, again yes there's DC checks for some of these uh, but it's going to be multiple checks for some and you'll be immune to the effects and so will your pet if you behave yourself so this spell, that spell are pretty damn baller. Some of these have no uh, spell resistance uh, issues, so that's nice as well. Other than ones that may not be uh, DC friendly, but they're the teammate friendly, and therefore you can slap it at your feet and still, even if you only catch one or two guys with the effect, it was still probably worth casting the spell then, right? So that's why we have some of them. Some of these are buffs, and you're gonna wanna get them. And again, some of these are on both sides, so make sure you get them. And while I would not say Dimension Door is a must-have spell as soon as possible, I would say it, because Dimension Door, you're a wizard. If you can't teleport, what the hell kind of wizard are you, man? Even if it's an opposing school, I'll still double slot that once just so I can teleport and get the hell out of Dodge, because it really is that useful. But I'm not even going to do that. I'll have it double slotted so that I can cast it twice, once to teleport in, once to teleport out. And this will get you some free XP more often than you think. So there's a lot of good choices here. I'm not going to go over them all, but just one final uh, mention that we will get Hellfire Ray. Note that we are only going to be a level 13 caster. We're going to go spell focus, not spell uh, uh, school focus to the point where we're you know picking uh, opposing schools. But we'll do spell focus evocation and we will do spell specialization. That allows us to pick one spell from our spell focus, which in this case is evocation, 
and buff it to caster levels. So instead of being a level 13 caster, we're going to, at level 20, make sure to pick Hellfire Ray so that we're considered level 15. Why? At level 15, not only does it do 15d6 of damage per ray, level 15 allows us to cast two rays. It would let us cast three rays if we were level 19, but that's not going to happen. So this is a decent compromise. Could I do Chain Lightning instead? Sure. Instead of doing 13d6 of damage to everybody in a big circle, it would do 15d6 zap. That would be better, right? Yes, but this could be 15d6 times two to one target, whereas this would be 15d6 to one or more targets, which, again, is still good. I'm not saying it's not good, but they could reflex out of this. If, they, if I hit them with this, I hit them with this, right? That's kind of the thing. From there, there is some definite milestones as we progress this build. And while they may not be woohoo and exciting to some of you, Deflect Arrows really does help you tank more than you think. Flurry of Blows, even that we get it free, it's still worth mentioning because a bad plus one really turns into a bad plus one plus one because we get two attacks in a round, assuming we're unarmed fighting or using a comma, a psi, or a quarterstaff, monk weapons. If they ever get around to giving us a ranged monk weapon, I will be so goddamn happy. Personally, I still say, devs, please pay attention, I would love that you turn dart into a monk ranged weapon and that flurry of blows works. Maybe you could make it where flurry of blow works, but uh, what's that one that the rapid shot doesn't work? I'd be fine with that. Still, I'd rather have flurry of blows on it than I would anything else. And it's strength based for the dart, so it does extra damage based on your high strength, which I'm cool with too. But again, that's not a case right now. From there, uh, again, domain pick. Pick what you like. Remember, you're not getting the spells in that domain, by the way, which really sucks. But you are getting like a free spell-like effect at level 1. Uh, and then you're getting maybe something at level 6, which is way the hell down here. In our case, since we went Earth Domain, I'm getting like Acid uh, DR10, uh, I want to say. Obviously late in the game, but hey, it's there. Why not take it? But you can go with you like. Uh, if I would suggest something other than Earth... My other suggestion would be to find, find out what your alignment needs to be, for one. You have to be lawful, I believe, to be a monk. And then from there, it's either lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil. And I don't think Inquisitor matters, and I don't think Wizard matters, and I don't think it matters for the Mystic Phaedrus part of the build. So, definitely lawful something. Now, for the domain pick, find a god that's willing to give you, with some kind of lawful good, lawful neutral, or lawful evil alignment, the ability to have domain pick for weather. Not air, weather. Why? Because the weather level one ability that you basically get for free, like multiple castings of like acid splash spells, what I'm going to get for weather, it does damage. I don't even know what kind. Maybe electrical, maybe physical, but does damage, which is lame. It's a ray spell, sure. But unlike the other ray spells where it just does damage and that's all it does, the weather attack is does damage. And then it does a, a minus two to the swing, the attack bonus of the bad guy. And it says guarantee. This doesn't say anything about there being a save. If you hit them, they take a minus two to the swing because they're getting pushed back by the, the weather attack, whatever the hell it's called. So that can be cool. And again, cheap armor for you, even if it only lasts for one round, that's a, a plus two to your armor class by giving a minus two to their attack bonus. Again, I could see that being cool. There's the animal companion, of course. Boon companion is necessary early. And I'm not going to go through everything here, but Arcane Bond is a judgment call. If you want to have a familiar, that's a thing. I'm not going to go familiar because I'm a wizard, and I'd like to be able to just spontaneously cast any spell that's level 1 through 7 because I have it in my book. Oh, that looks like I'm not going to need that spell. Delete you, slot you in place, Arcane Bond. Oh, look, I have the spell now. That's why this one's cool. Not as useful if you went like Sorcerer. But again, it's the point. And I don't know that this doesn't work on the other side, from the Inquisitor side, but I'm fairly certain it does not. Otherwise, you'd have all kinds of cool spells to pick from. Other things to mention, of course, just quickly, is that, of course, your solo tactics, hunter tactics, with you and your pet basically getting any teamwork feat combined once you get to this level. I pick out flank here, and then precise strike there. So better, uh, uh, is this attack bonus, I want to say? And better damage output. So really nice. So how you do, it's up to you. Um, this is where, of course, we went spell focus, evocation, then spell specialization. So this is where we start turning one spell into two caster levels higher. And there's always something to pick that 
will get some kind of benefit. So don't feel bad about what you're picking on that. Or make sure at level 20 you really do go that Hellfire Ray if you're following my build. From there, of course, we got our Crane Style, Crane Wing, Crane Repost. All good. This is as soon as I can get Crane Repost. Crane Wing is a little late, but I really wanted that spell specialization. That extra damage is extremely helpful. And again, more stuff that we'll talk about. But favorite enemy, pick something. Bane Weapon, always nice, and it's an ability that you just click and you have it. Uh, and then, of course, possible domain ability way the hell down here. Buffs to be aware of, and this is just rough scattershot of spells that I would suggest picking anyway. Not necessarily good ones, like Bull Strength, Cast Grace, and Owl Wisdom. I don't care about them, but you're going to get them as a wizard anyway. If it helps you level up, feel free to have one or two slotted on the wizard side of things to help increase your attack bonus, your damage, your armor, whatever. But, Bless, you're going to get a ring. That's why I'm suggesting not picking the spell. And that ring allows you to cast it three times a day for one minute at a time. It's a plus one bonus to your attack bonus. Notice you're getting a plus one plus one because you got a uh, flurry of blows at level one thanks to your monk level. Uh, you got a plus three added to each of those because your strength, you're, I'm assuming you're attacking melee style, so it's a four, plus four, plus four. That's not bad at level one, by the way, even on hard difficulty. That may not land all the time, but it's still better than having a plus one, plus two, or plus three. So. Uh, from there, of course, there's ways at level 2 for you to go from plus 4, plus 4 to plus 5, plus 5. Cash it, you know, bless with that little ring three times a day. You know, buy yourself a masterwork monk weapon. And again, you go from a plus 5, plus 5, and then now to a plus 6, plus 6, and that's at level 2. That's, I'd say, pretty damn decent for a chance to hit. Yes, it will wear off quick, but if you're killing quickly, then in the grand scheme of things, that bless ring is going to earn its weight in gold, in my opinion. Divine Favor will be a nice buff when you get it. Goes with its luck bonus, so they would stack even. Uh, plus one to attack bonus and damage, and it scales. So it goes to plus two at level six and higher, and then plus three at level nine, and anything past it. So a really decent buff. It will level one spell, very helpful. And again, we got many others, and we're not going to go over them all, but I can suggest as soon as Heroism comes available, and I'm fairly certain this is on the wizard side of things. Yes, you can get it on both sides, but you don't get access to it, I don't think, until much later. I'll see, level 1, level 2, level 3, this is a level 4 spell technically for a, uh, what do you call those guys, the Inquisitor. But we're not going to be level 4 Inquisitor here, it'll be much later. So this will be probably the wizard that gets it at this point. And this is a nice plus 2 for many, many, many minutes to your swing. So if, if you take it at this level and a plus 6, plus 6, plus 1 is your chance to hit, Add this to it, and you got a plus eight, plus eight, plus three, and that's even higher than this because you're not factoring in your strength. So, eight, eight, and three turns into eleven, eleven, and six. That's, that's pretty good. So now a fighter, on the other hand, at level ten without any buffs on them, will always be at a plus ten, plus five, but they'll have a better weapon more likely than you because they're fighters. That's what they're going to jive on. They're going to have. Uh, better skill or feats than you, so you know they'll have like weapon focus and whatnot. So we guess that 10 and 5 actually starts getting higher and higher and higher. And more likely than not, they're going to maximize something like strength or dex, making it even higher again, which whatever weapon they're wielding. So yeah, we're not a fighter, but we can buff like one, so it's still a thing. And there's plenty of great stuff in here. Notice again that depending on the category, they don't stack. Lux don't stack with other Lux, so I don't get to use Divine Favor and then uh, Divine Power and expect to get a plus three uh, attack bonus and damage from both of them. It's going to be one or the other, whichever is the highest. And if they're equal, then it just doesn't matter. It just picks one. But notice that some of these things stack in different ways. Like Divine Favor is an uh, attack bonus and a damage bonus, and that's it. Prayer is that too, but it also skill and saves. Well, I don't care about, well, I do care, but I not going to get another plus one added to the plus three over here for the attack bonus and damage. But that doesn't mean I will not cast Divine Favor and Prayer at the same time. One, Prayer penalizes the bad guys. Two, it also gives me a buff to skills and saves, and maybe that's important to me. So it's okay to layer them for that reason, but don't think you're getting gypped because you're not getting another plus one to your attack bonus and your damage. I know I cast a Prayer spell. Yeah, it's because it's a luck bonus like Divine Favor, and Divine Favor is better than it already. So it's there, it's just underneath the Divine Favor, and you're not getting the benefit of this part. 
you will get the benefit of those things though. Again, there's a variety of other things that we could talk about on this, but I'm not going to get too far into them. We have plenty more still to cover. Note though at level 20, just to point this out to you, a straight fighter would be at a 20, 15, sorry, a plus 20, plus 15, plus 10, plus 5. They would have four attacks guaranteed on whatever weapon they're using. Now, we're at 11, 11, 6, and 1. So we got four attacks, but clearly not as good as a 20, 15, 10, and 5. But again, unlike them, we have spells that allow us to get higher than this and higher than them, as well as even more attacks than them because we'll do things like haste, giving us an extra attack, or we'll transform, giving us a bab equal to a fighter and then extra stuff besides. So there's all kinds of good stuff that we're going to get that they don't. From here, I thought it'd be important to mention some buffs, not ones that we're going to all have access to, but just spells in general that are good buffs for armor, attack bonus, including base attack bonus, um, skills, uh, enhancements for your physical and mental stats. Uh, we can talk about damage output. So again, a variety of things. So let's talk about armor first. Dodge ones all seem to stack, but that's a little misleading. What I mean is if it says dodge on it, like haste will say plus one dodge, in a bracket, it'll say dodge next to it, then that will stack with any other dodge feat or skill or ability that you have in that dodge category. So all dodge bonuses stack. But, for instance, a reduced person gives you a plus one to your dexterity slash dodge because it increases your dexterity two points. A two point increase, assuming you can benefit from it, gives you a plus one to your armor class under this category. Now, Normally I'd say that doesn't stack with Cat's Grace because it's also a dexterity bonus plus four, no less. So Cat's Grace is better. The weird part is, is Cat's Grace is an enhancement of a physical ability like dexterity, whereas Reduced Person is a size bonus to dexterity. Because they're different is enhancement versus size, they will stack. So I can cast these two spells and I'll have at least a plus three to my armor class. Again, assuming my dexterity can be used. If I'm wearing armor that penalizes that, then I may not get either of those benefits. But I'm assuming I'm wearing robes like I should be as a monk, then I would actually get this plus three guaranteed. That's pretty cool. Notice that some are penalties. In large person, you're big and clumsy. And therefore, your dexterity goes down and it's a size penalty as well. So again, it wouldn't be uh, overridden by Cat's Grace, but they would be uh, a minus one and a plus two on your armor. So obviously after it, both spells being cast, you'd have at least a plus one to your armor class instead of a penalty. Notice that mass reduced person and mass large person just have the same effect. I just mentioned them because this is the level they show up. And just because I have it here doesn't mean I will not use it there. I may be out of level one spells and really need a reduced person on myself. And well, if I have a level four mass reduced person slotted, well, I'll just use it. Notice that righteous might, you're bigger and therefore you're clumsy, just like a large person. And definitely do not stack those together. That would be a complete waste and you'd be a massive penalty because um, uh, righteous might, instead of it being a minus one, or sorry, a minus two to dexterity because of size, which it should be, it actually says minus two dex other. And I believe that means that it will stack, the penalty will stack with enlarged person minus two dexterity size. So that means you're really taking with both those spells on a minus four penalty to dex. That would suck. And therefore you would take a minus two to your armor class as a result. Notice that we have ones that buff, but again, just like Cat's Grace, this is an enhancement. Transformation buffs plus four enhancement to strength, dex, and con. So it's like basically you've cast full strength, cast grace, and bear's endurance on you all in one spell, which is really the way to look at this. And it does even more than that. But I'm just saying for the purpose of this part of the armor class, it's the same as like cast graces on you. So they will not stack. It's one or the other. More likely than not, you'll have a belt that's better than this anyway, so you don't even need to cast it. But you could cast it on your pet. You don't have a belt. Fiery body is one of the bigger enhancements, and that's just because it's actually a plus six enhancement to dex. Again, Cat's Grace is an enhancement, so is Fiery Body. Fiery Body and Cat's Grace on you, you will not get a plus two and a plus three, you'll just get the plus three. And the Dexterity will only go up plus six as a result, because the plus four from there will be ignored. As far as armor, armor class is concerned, we have only one spell that I know of that gives you a buff, Mage Armor, and that's a plus four. This is the equivalent of the, me wearing a chain shirt, which is also plus four, worth of armor, armor class. 
Notice there's an armor enhancement armor class, and that can come from this spell magical investment, which should mean that these two should stack. What does that mean? Well, if I get magical investment and I chug a potion or cast ma mage armor on myself, I'll get this plus four, and I'll get whatever bonus this is. How do I get this bonus? You don't get to buff your mage armor with it. You do have to buff a piece of armor to do it. That could be a robe, I believe. I don't know that for sure, but I know you have to be wearing something in your armor slot and then buff it. Now, we will not get the plus five in our build. The highest we can take it is plus four, but that's still pretty good. And again, just because we can't benefit from it doesn't mean our friends that join us with lame gear can't. Notice that magical vestment is also down here in shield enhancement armor class. So again, you can buff shields as well. And of course, if you don't use a shield, which I can, but I don't want to because of arcane spell failure, I could just cast shield spell and at least get a plus four on this side. But I can't buff it with magical vestment because it's not a real shield, it's just a spell. Notice we have deflection. And while there's a lot of different ones here for deflection, in my opinion, the best one and the only one you really give a damn about is Shield of Faith as far as this category is concerned. One, Stunning Barrier is lame, doesn't last very long, it's only plus one, and Shield of Faith shows up at the same level. So why would you want a subpar armor class that has a chance of stunning the first person that hits you and then the, the armor class falls off you? I'd rather have a plus two, and this actually does, it is wrong, it's not plus one to plus five, it should be plus two to plus five. But the point is, you still have a much better buff with this one and it lasts longer too. Protection from Lyman's decent, but it doesn't scale. It just goes up in how long it lasts. This is weird, though, because the plus two deflection only shows up against whatever alignment is attacking you. So if you say protection from evil as an example, they would have to be evil. There's a lot of guys in this game that are chaotic neutral, and there's a lot of guys that are neutral evil. So how do you know which alignment they are? You don't really know off the top of your head, so you're just kind of hoping for the best, and you've buffed for the right protection. Chaos or evil or good or lawful, but that's basically your choices. So I don't really care about protection from alignment, which is a shame, because it gives you some uh, saving throw buffs as well. Uh, angelic Aspect is just basically an increased version of protection from alignment, in my opinion. It's still plus two, and it's also guaranteed to be against evil. Greater Angela, Angelic Aspect is a souped up version of it, plus four, a bunch of other Philly bits besides, and I think it really is still against evil, but the tooltip's unclear. Natural Armor Armor Class does stack. So any spell in here, if you're capable of casting multiples, cast one and then a different one and then a different one, and you can actually add all those armors on. And obviously you can't go from dragon kind one to two to three. You just basically change into a different dragon. But I could do Frightful Aspect, dragon kind three and transformation. That's a plus six, plus eight makes 14. And another plus four from here makes it a plus 18 to my armor class by casting these three spells. Of course, it's under that natural armor, armor class category. Natural Armor Enhancement Armor Class does not stack. So if you have Bark Skin and Genie Kind, whichever gives you the higher number is the one that the buff. And this one is lackluster in my opinion. While it's useful, and again, I think Righteous might not, not, might not be in this category. It might be up here, but check it. Um, the point with Bark Skin at the very least is that an arm, uh, Amulet of Natural Armor, that's this category. So if you have that amulet and it's better or equal to what you get from Bark Skin, then Bark Skin is useless for you. You might as well just wear the necklace. Or buff yourself up with bark skin, take off the necklace, and put a better necklace on you that gives you some different effect. That's always good tactics, too. There's a size armor class, and the reason that this is size is an issue is because if you're smaller, it's easier for you to dodge. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say dodge, because that's over here. It's harder for the bad guys to hit you. If you're a big hogging monster of a target, it's easier for normal sized humans to hit you. That's why size armor class is its own separate category. And again, notice reduced person is over here then twice. We're getting a plus one thanks to the dex bonus because of size and a plus one due to our size bonus because it's just easier for us to miss because we're teeny tiny. So that's a plus two that you're getting from that and that does work. Notice that enlarged person is the opposite and therefore you're easier to hit so there's a minus one and then you're, you're a lumbering oaf and therefore your dex goes down too so you're at another minus one. So an enlarged person really screws your armor, but it does help you kind of do some damage. So if you need damage output, this is really the one to go for. If you need to turtle up, reduce person's your go-to spell. And the same, of course, with mass reduce and mass enlarge. Righteous Might, again, you're bigger. It's easier to hit you. Dragon Kind 2, not 1, 2, it's easier to hit you. Which means Dragon Kind 1, they consider to be normal human size, which is laughable. But it's fine, because that means you don't get that penalty. That's cool, so take Dragon Kind 1 at least. 
From there, knows Dragonkind 3, I have no idea. I'm assuming that since it's Dragonkind 1 is small, Dragonkind 2 is medium, and Dragonkind 3 would be bigger, I'm assuming that the penalty would be bigger, but I don't know that. Frightful Aspect, again, you get bigger, it's easier to hit you. And then same with Legendary Proportions. I haven't tested it, but I'm assuming if you're bigger and bigger by two categories, I'm guessing this is probably a minus two, just like this is a minus two. Again, is a total guess. These other two here, I don't know how to test Seed Mantle because it doesn't show up. It shows that you have the spell on you, but it doesn't show your armor class until they swing at you, and I have no idea how to really test that. Foresight, on the other hand, is the only one on this entire list that's an insight armor class bonus. And Foresight, even though it's level 9, it's an amazing spell in that it prevents you from ever being flat-footed again. Well, while the spell's on, anyway. So it's definitely worth a mention, but we won't have access to these last two because we will only have access to level 7 spells as a wizard. From here, you have base attack and attack buffs. Now, base attack buffs are easy. There's only one that I know of, and that's transformation. It literally takes, when you cast a spell, whatever level you are, that's what your base attack bonus is considered. So whatever your character level, not your class level, character level is. So if I'm a level 16 wizard and 4 druid, for whatever reason, I'm a level 20 character. So a transformation, I activate it, and then suddenly I have a base attack bonus of plus 20. That's pretty baller. And all the extra attacks that are associated with it. So a plus 20, plus 15, plus 10, plus 5. Just like a regular fighter at level 20, basically, is what this does. It also increases your strength, your dex, and your con plus 4, which is why you're getting a plus 2 as well for your attack bonus, because with a strength bump and a dex bump, you at least should be going up 2. Now, chances are you're not actually getting that. Why? Because you probably have a belt that's better than that on already, or equal to it at least, and they will not stack. But if you don't, you should get a plus 2 bonus to your uh, attack bonus. There's a lot of good stuff in here, and I'm not going to go over everything. But just to point out some things, morales don't, do not stack, of course. So Bless rapidly gets crowded out by heroism, which lasts even longer. Greater heroism doesn't last longer, and it's a very high investment to, to cast a spell at that level. But it is a plus four, and that's a really nice bump. And, of course, we have one sacred. That's Burst of Glory. A lot of different size category ones. And Luck, which, again, don't stack. Uh, competence, the only one I could find was Aspect of the Falcon, and that's only for ranged spells. But that includes rays, or sorry, ranged attacks. That also includes rays um, and you know, crossbows and stuff of that nature. But that is, since we are going to do beams, snowballs, and whatever else, this will actually be helpful, and it's very early level. True Strike, of course, for that you really have to hit somebody once. That's why it's here, and it's an insight bonus. So that's the only one I could find that's an insight bonus in this case. Uh, from there, again, we got, again, ability increases and decreases, and they vary. Why do I say they vary? Because it should be a set number, right? Well, okay, look at it this way. Reduced person. Lowers my strength, increases my dex. Are you shooting with a bow? Well, then that's a bonus, right? Because your dex is going up. Are you shooting, or are you swinging with a weapon? And are you strength-based? Well, then that's a penalty, because your strength is lower, right? Well, what if your weapon finessing? That's a bonus, then. You see what I'm saying by various comments? So you have to kind of pay attention. And that's on you to pay attention to that stuff. I can't tell you how to cast your spells to maximize their effects. But they are there, and that's good stuff to know. Notice that, again, we have a haste, which is a, in a weird category all its own. I don't even know what it says next to the plus one other than haste. But it will increase your attack bonus, guaranteed. And I don't see anything else on the list that seems to override it. So it doesn't seem to fall in any other category. Damage buffs can be a variety of things. And again, I'm not going to go into everything here. But... Hurricane Bow and Lead Blades are the opposites of each other. Hurricane Bow buffs the ranged weapon damage range. Lead Blades buff the melee, buff the melee damage range. What I mean is, is if you take in a 1d4 weapon as a normal person, a dagger, and I cast Lead Blades on it, or you, the buff means that your weapon is one category size bigger, which means instead of a 1 to 4 weapon damage, it's doing 1 to 6. And vice versa, if you had a 1 to 6 weapon and you shrink down in size, you have a penalty to that weapon. Which is why when you give Lindsay a dagger, instead of doing 1d4, it does like 1d3. It's lame damage. Or same with like a short sword or a, uh, what do you call it, a long sword. Any weapon that you give her, it, it reduces the size category. If you enlarge yourself, you make yourself bigger, again, it goes up in size, which is why mass enlarge. Righteous Might, Frightful Aspect, I'll buff you because you're going up 
in size category and therefore your weapon is considered a higher size category. I assume, it's not in here, but I assume the uh, legendary proportions, whatever the hell it's called spell, that increases you according to the tooltip two categories bigger. So from normal size to big size to huge, I think is what it, the category is, that would be probably two buffs then to your weapon. I don't know, I haven't tested. Sets so vitals for some sneak attack damage for obvious reasons. We have elemental damage if we go genie kind for our melee attacks. Fire damage for our unarmed attacks if we use fire body. Straight up plus damages if you're using one of these luck abilities. And of course we can increase your strength. Or dex if you have weapon finesse and then something like an agile weapon. Or if you had weapon finesse and like fencing grace or the other one. You know, a decent deck space build still gets buffs and therefore gets better damage because of those buffs. From there, let's look at some things that buff skills. And in many cases, you'll see they buff all skills. Some are specific. That's important. Heroism and, of course, greater heroism are nice. Plus two to plus four for all your skills. Great spells. Nothing wrong with them. I couldn't find anything that was a sacred bonus to skills. I'm sure it's out there. I just didn't find it. Uh, reduced person, honestly, and so does mass reduced person, does buff your stealth. And not just because it's increasing your dex. It's a size-based buff to your stealth. Feel free to check it. If that's true, then I'm assuming the same is applicable in reverse. If you use enlarged person or any of those spells that make you bigger, you probably get a penalty to your stealth because you're a big lumbering jackass. It's harder to hide as a dragon, which is nice that they actually incorporated that into this game. Don't get me wrong. I think it actually makes perfect sense. I always thought it was funny in Neverwinter Nights 2 that I could do hide in plain sight has, you know, like a, a multi-class build that dips into something weird that gives hide and plate sight for free. And I'm a, uh, morphed into a dragon, a big-ass dragon on the screen, and I'm like, I'm not here. And I'm just like, hey, where'd he go? I'm like, really, man? But that's the way they did it. This is kind of makes sense, though, to me, because, again, you're teeny tiny. You should be more stealthy, and vice versa. We have some spells, like luck spells, that increase your skills a little. We get ones that increase just a specific skill, athletics and then strength checks. Now it says in the tooltip, strength checks and strength based skill checks. And there are only one strength based skill check I know of, which is athletic. So I'm assuming that's what this means. But this is a really nice buff because you can get it all the way up to a nice plus six, by the way. We will not on this build. We'll actually get as high as plus five. But still, that's pretty damn good. Notice there's a competence buff in aspect of the Falcon. So not only are you getting a better chance to hit ranged attacks, including your race spells, you're also getting a plus three perception while it's up, which is pretty baller. Uh, of course, we have fine traps as an insight, and it's a plus one perception per two caster levels. Only works on traps only, so you will see it activated as a little icon on your, your character sheet, or on your name plate, but on your character sheet, when you look for under a perception, you won't see any buff at all, and you wonder, what the hell? But trust me, it does work. You walk up to a trap, when you see the perception check, hover over it, find out what the number is, it'll be definitely higher than what it would be if you did not have this buff. So that's how I know it works. And again, only on traps. Uh, Vanish, Invisibility, and Greater Invis all give, up, I believe, right, plus 20 to stealth. Uh, the difference is, is how long they last. These two last one round per caster level, one round per caster level, and Invisibility last one minute per caster level. The difference being is Vanish and Invisibility immediately wear off as soon as you attack. And just because you're invisible or vanished, which is still technically invisibility, by the way, just less of a duration, just because you're invisible doesn't mean they can't see you. It just means you have a really good stealth as far as the game is concerned. So they're having a hard time locating your position, maybe, but that doesn't mean they can't shoot in their general direction. So know that this doesn't make you immortal. It's just an easier way to bug the hell out. And, of course, there's so many enhancement and ability upgrades that I can't really list them all here and make some sense of it. But basically, no, with the exception of anything that just buffs con, any other physical or mental stat that you're buffing would, of course, add to a buff to your skills, the appropriate thing. So if you're buffing strength, you're getting an athletics bump. If you're buffing dex, you're getting a um, mobility, a sneak, att or a sneak attack, sorry, a stealth, and um, what's the third one? Mobility, stealth, and, and oh, uh, uh, trickery. Uh, buff. So all that stuff is applicable because it's dex based, right? And then the same for intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Now here's some ability buffs to go over, and again, I'm not covering everything that gives you a buff. 
or a debuff because beast shapes there's too many to go over same with elemental body there's four different elemental bodies one through four and then there's four different kind of elements so these are all different but notice that almost all if not all of these buffs fall under the polymorph category which is what you're seeing over here also notice that all these buffs once you cast the spell you can't cast spells anymore you turn into the forum and then you're stuck in it the exception to the rule is in this case is the dragon kind one two and three you can turn into a dragon and still be able to cast spells, which I think is pretty damn cool. So that's nice. Uh, you have enhancements, and these are things that are literally like that your belt would give you an enhancement to, like a, a strength, a dex, a con, all of the above, two of the above. There's plenty in the game. They do not stack, of course, so don't think you're going to do a cat's grace and then wear a dexterity belt on. This is going to take the best score of the two. Uh, but these are basically ones that we got for self-buffs for various uh, physical or mental stats. Polymorph is a separate category, so you could say use bull strength, which is a plus four to strength, and dragon kind one, which is a plus four polymorph buff to strength, and you could actually eke out an eight, a plus eight to your strength as a result of those two spells. That's cool. Um, notice that you get a buff to strength and con, and they all fall in the polymorph category. We got really nice buffs, and it's nice that they don't give a dex penalty to these guys. So dragons were agile. Again, we have buffs and debuffs, depending on which one we're picking for reduced person and large person. Notice that these aren't falling into the size category. So they're not an enhancement. So if you really want to be strong, both strength and large person will get you a plus six to your strength. That's a thing. Same with uh, dexterity, reduced person and cast grace, a plus four from here and a plus two from there. They would stack, that's a plus six, that's nice but it's kind of weird, and I probably wouldn't do it. Righteous Might is another size buff, and again, really pretty baller. Notice this one here. Instead of the dex being a size-based penalty like this one is, it is an other penalty. It will say minus two dex, you'll hover over it, and it will say minus two, and it'll say in brackets, other. And I think that means then, of course, any other minus two dex penalty from size, like in large person, would stack. So a minus two and a minus two would make a minus four. That would suck if that's true. So be warned that that's probably not the way to go. And you really wouldn't want to do that anyway because the plus four strength bonus and this plus two strength bonus will not stack either because they both, again, fall into the size category. So this would be the only effect. And you would actually get a bigger penalty to your decks, which would suck. Legendary portions, I can't really tell you what it does. It has a tooltip. But if you read those tooltips for, like, Dragon Kind, they don't say anything about Polymorph. It says size. It's a lie. It will literally say this on your sheet when you change into dragon kind hover over your strength and it will say plus four it'll say bracket polymorph bracket and again i know it works because you can stack bull strength with it and therefore it's not an enhancement same with enlarged person i can do enlarged person in dragon kind one and i can get a plus six to strength it seems weird but i can do it so once because it's a size bonus once because it's a polymorph bonus and again there's more to cover than we're talking about here this is the only one that was a morale one that i could find rage and it's not one you're going to want anyway. It's a plus two strength, plus two con, and you can't cast spells under its effect. But it is there, so you do get a buff, but it's kind of meh. With that, though, that's basically everything. Now, I know that's a lot to talk about, and this video was particularly long. I do apologize for that, but this kind of explains what I was thinking about this build and how it really does have some traction. I really do think that you can take this pretty damn far, especially if you're doing a solo run with you and your pet. may not be able to beat the game by itself, but it'll take you there at least, and that's to give you a pretty good far. I still think it has some potential, and again, just to reemphasize, not even using spells with gear, I know I can get my strength up another 8 to 24. Dex I can get up another 8 to 22. Same with Con. Intelligence I can get up another 8 to 26. Wisdom to 24. Charisma to 18. This is a pretty badass dude, and that's only wearing the best belt and the best hat I can find. And again, I would probably try to do that, so... It really does have a lot of potential. Spells from both sides, protection that a, a true inquisitor or a true wizard wouldn't have on their own, but now because we're merging together with our mystic thayers, we actually have those abilities. I think you're going to like this build. But with that, tell me how you guys buff up differently than me. What other spells do you think I should have mentioned or that you always seem to use? And I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.